Hello YouTubers, just a quick demonstration of some budget gear I bought over the years. As you can see it's a bit of a random selection of components but um, yeah a lot of it's been through buying and selling on eBay, um, just collecting you know sort of uh, Gumtree, uh, local ads that sort of stuff really so you know I mean found forage repaired spares repair, that sort of stuff. Um, some of it is, as you see, not quite up to date, up to date, but um, I have tried to advance in the last year or so by going up to Blu-ray um, and buying a PS3. Um, I still got my PS2, uh, which works very well. Um, this is my fourth PS3. These are absolutely dreadful machines, but I managed to buy a good reconditioned unit um, with warranty for 12 months. So that's handy. Uh, just a random selection of drives. You've got some for films, music. It's in the still a bit of disarray here at the minute. I've I haven't long moved into um, the address I'm at now, um, so it's still a bit of an ongoing process. I got to buy some. Um, bigger racks to to house all the components really because uh, they're a bit sort of stuffed in here already in one place um, the actual kit comprised of it said this is an R, um, RCD 965BX it's not the limited edition or um, any of the tweaked sort of models um, it's just a sort of standard model uh, I was lucky to get it for a good price uh, during the Christmas rush with the original box and the original remote control which was quite cool um, didn't expect it but it, it was in the box um, uh, below it I said I've got, I'm just running as a um, pre-amplifier unit to control the sub-amplifiers uh, as a 3155, it's fully functional but I'm just using it currently as a pre-amp until I can, you know, change it for something else, you know, a, a proper preamp um, or a base EQ. Um, below it, they are a bit tatty, but these have been moved address to address. They've been, to, they've done many gigs. Um, they're extremely powerful, um, and they've actually had a pint spilt over them before now, but they're working very well. They are the twenty two hundred power envelopes. Um, beautiful bits of kit. Uh, it's all been recapped. Um, all the actual power chips, the actual amp chips have been uh, replaced. All the relays have been replaced. Uh, a lot has been rewired, resoldered. Um, anything that sort of needed doing or looked like it needed doing uh, has been replaced. So they're now running stable and um, they're not suffering from any problems which they're prone to do. Um, uh, which I've seen in the past. Um, they do sound a lot better than before, so it said, you know, I was uh, happy and a bit upset that uh, Pine got spilled over them, but it was a good excuse to get them uh, refurbished. Uh, one did survive, but it was in a bad state. Um, I think, which one was it? Um, yes, this one. That's the one that survived the... the um, the pint accident, it was a pint of cider it was that spilled over it, that one survived. Um, this one is another amp, the the, the other one that um, got damaged um, is now in my loft as spares. Um, the only thing that's pretty much salvage, salvageable from it was the actual power transformer. The rest of it was pretty much um, gone. It was gone within you know the first couple of seconds. Um, Below it, my late my later acquisition acquisition is the DSP A1 Yamaha. Uh, this is not the AX1. This is the A1, which are a little bit more reliable than the AX1, from what I've read. Um, there's not much in the units. Um, there's a couple more inputs on the back of the AX1. Um, this one's got more of a rotary um, volume control, whereas the AX1 has got the um, uh, non rotary, it's basically electronic um, volume control. Um, but all the nest, I said, you know, I found some gum tree for about £50, and so far, so good. 
uh, came with the remote control. Um, the only thing that got damaged in the post was one of the feet got snapped off, but it was working good. Um, like I said, I got the the extra bits there, but um, this is your well, pretty much Mark One Blu-ray. It's a very early Blu-ray player, although it does have an update of firmware on it. Um, still as slow as the hills, loading up any disc, um, ejecting or anything. It's just that's how the nature of these things are. Um, it's just a Blu-ray player, but the picture is actually very good from it. Underneath, I've got uh, an Arkham which I got cheap on the internet. Don't know why it's sort of sitting there. It's doing nothing at the minute, but it does actually make a nice backup DVD player and also a good backup CD player as well. Because as as with Arkham products, they are pretty uh, solid. Um, so I'm gonna keep it for now until until I need to make rack space really. And underneath I've got my old clunker, it's my Dell E520, which um, currently is running the picture there, which I'll show you in a sec. Um, I've had this for years, um, it's just been a good PC, you know, um, not really high spec now, it's, like I said, it is getting a bit dated. Uh, I think it's going to be a dual core, 4 uh, gig memory, that sort of thing, It's it, it does need replacement, but I'm going to wait till it completely just says no more, and then get rid of it then or whatever um, but no it's been good to be honest um, I've upgraded a few bits inside obviously I've added more memory um, and put a better sound card in it uh, that sort of thing really um, but it's just on a standard PC to be honest um, I said over here we got the Bose and Wilkins uh, DM580s um, which I had to repair the both drivers um, in 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 each of these cabinets were bad, um, so they had to be replaced. The tweeters are blown, so pretty much the only uh, the only thing they're working on it was the two um, base mid drivers, um, but they were in bad shape. They were, they, you know, they were working, but you you know they can tell that they'd been obviously damaged by a low power amplifier or um, just in general not taken care of, so I had to replace all three units in each speaker, which I wasn't happy about. Um, but I, you know, said so the cabinets were in good shape, and so was the crossover. So it was just a case of repairing them. Um, oops, get that back on there. I'm not used to see things. Um, again, a later acquisition. Um, it's just. <laughs> I bought three pairs of speakers within ooh, the period of about two months. Uh, I just couldn't get my ears to like the speakers I was buying. I was just sort of you know, buying blind, but obviously I went, you uh, know, I was buying Kef and Mordant shorts and sort of things like that. But I went back to Boas. Um, these came to me um, from a seller. I managed to make an offer on. Uh, they're the six ten eyes, and they're the last edition of the six ten eyes before they um, move to the the Kevlar type cones, which are the yellow ones you see about nowadays. Um, these are very fragile speakers. Th this this model, um, the tweeters are very solid, but the actual the the base mid bins um, are not as solid, to be honest. Um, so at the moment, I said. With these now, there's not much bass running through these. Most of the bass goes to the the five eighties to take away the strain from these. Um, I had to replace the dry, you know, the the main bass driver in these, uh, as the um, the seller didn't tell me that um, one of them was actually playing up. So I had to track down another bass mid driver to go in these speakers. And um, it was one of those um, situations where I was sitting on the internet, you know, having to go through pages and pages of data on eBay and back data because you can actually check on finished listings. So I was going through pages after pages to try and find a uh, driver for it, but I managed to find one because you can't sometimes find it via just the model number of the speaker. You have to find it via the model number of the base mid driver, which is really really annoying um, but I managed to find one in working condition I've still got the original which can be sent off 
uh, to be reconditioned. So I might do that now. See, you know, when I get enough money together, I might send it off um, as a spare driver. Then uh, it's pretty much the same all round. You know, it's the same thing the other side. Um, it's still in a bit of a disarray. I need to really try and space these speakers out and try and get it, everything sort of logical layout really. Um, as a surround sound, because this is a 7.2 system, you've got stereo subs running in conjunction with this, so it's a 7.2 setup. You've got your side effects with the Yamaha, because Yamaha amplifiers have got a 235 watt amp to run uh, side effects. All this does is just enhances the actual uh, front surround to the actual um, 5.1 setup. Um, or the 5.2 setup and gives you a bit extra spatial on the front. Um, so I've just added some smaller jammos to it at the minute until I can find a Bose and Wilkins package to go with the rest of it. But as I said, I got these for a good price. Um, obviously, there's, there's uh, four of the four of those. There's, uh, well, you can see it, another two in the back. Um, obviously, the one to the side and obviously then you've got your centre jammer at the bottom there. Um yeah, they're good little sounding units, they do handle the power well. Um uh, jammer were not particularly um some of their cheaper stuff, which I think this is more of the budget line, um isn't really um incredible as they say, you know, Jamble do make nice speakers but you've got to spend a lot of money to actually get quality from Jamo. I've seen, you know, that they've known for making pub speakers and really trashy sounding speakers, to be honest. Um, these are borderline okay. Um, they don't sort of crack and pop and anything like that. They don't do anything nasty. Um, I did notice a little bit, I've had to change all the frequencies on the Yamaha for the centre channel because it was screeching a little bit, but I think that was just um, the case. I was, I was pretty much putting too much power into that speaker um, because that Yamaha basically kicks out um, 5 by 110 watt into all the channels um, and obviously dynamic power of 5 130 watts, but uh, it's all claimed, that's claimed power and the only company I believe them to be correct on their power ratings is NAD. NAD have always built everything to sound, you know, the actual, um, the watch levels are always claimed correctly if, if actually underrated. Um, I said like this one as a two channel is actually a 255 watt if I'm correct. As a normal amp you can obviously bridge it then to about uh, between 100 to 120 watts in just one ch one channel. These are, cu are currently running monoblock, uh, which does a continue of 400 each. But that's by NADS manufacturing standards. These have been tuned, so they're producing around about 440, but 440, 450 watt each uh, continuous power. Um, it'll do then clip-in power of just over 600 watts each into an 8-ohm load and then again dynamic power is between uh, 1200 watts uh, into 8-ohm which is dynamic power which is very short term burst power which is not something that you'd really want to do with them because you can pop a few things uh, like your speakers, your ears and probably some internal components um, but obviously these um, uh, are by far the most powerful amplifiers I've actually had the pleasure of using in a live situation and in the home and those bowers in the corner are only rated 120 watts so I said if I was to put these into full swing those might be flying a you know, few components straight up its front grill so not something I want to be too hasty about there um, but anyway, I think I've bored you enough with all my dribble drabbling and flabbering with my lips there. Um, I'll, I'll play you a short clip. This is um, Michael Jackson, Moonwalker. I know it sounds boring, I know, but the soundtrack to it, this is obviously a Blu-ray 
which I got on the PC, and it, the, the the sound quality is out of this world with this song, and um, it's obviously it's halfway through the film, obviously, but um, um, it does bring out the best in this in this live um, performance here within the room. Um, but yeah, I'll, further do. I'll, I'll give you a bit of a, a bit of a spell with this now. Let me just uh, set that up. Bear with me. Um, let's play this. enjoyed me boring the hell of you for about 20 minutes um for whatever time you watched um well actually you'd have to watch it to know so that's why <laughs> i'm apologizing um um but yeah obviously it's still in disarray but it will get there um i will do um a video again now with um i'll do a test with the 
with the iPad. I've had problems recently with the iPad and the PC. Um, obviously, I got to you know, connect it, but it's um, jumping slightly. I think it's just um, the memory needs to be sorted out. I don't know. I'm going to have to look at that again, but um, it just seems to, d to jump on the MP3 tr tracks for some reason. Um, so that's the next thing I'll um, I'll be doing. Um, but apart from that, uh, yeah, um, obviously the sound quality is not going to be brilliant because obviously it's been recorded through an iPhone 4S, um, so the sound quality is going to be a bit flat, to be honest. I said you won't be able to pick up the um, entire surround sound effect, no, you'll be able to pick up the bass, the mid, or any treble, it's, you know, it's going to be a bit flat. Um, so it's what you make of it, really. Um, in the live situation I'm standing here now, um, it did sort of buzz my feet and... Um, sort of kill my ears a bit so uh, yeah um, in a real life situation it will sound a lot better than what you're hearing through this phone but um, yeah if I'll do I'll um, be catching you soon and I hope you enjoy <laughs>